Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. If you are interested in painting these seven flowers, then stick around. I will show you exactly how to do them and the supplies that you'll need. All right, so today I have my watercolor sketchbook right over here. I've got my watercolor paints, my water. I've got a towel for dabbing or paper towel, whatever you need. And I've got several brushes here. I have a number six and a number 12 round. These are etcher brushes. We have a really nice point on them. And so they'll be great for all of our florals we're doing today. So if you don't have these brushes, guys, no worries, because you can use whatever you have. We're not going to be too picky. We're also not going to be doing a basic sketch today. This one is a liner. If you want to use it for extra details, grab one. If not, you can use number one or two. Totally works. I was doing some samples last night. This is kind of what we're going for. Some random little guys, so we'll see how it goes. All right, so let's get started. So we're going to dip our number 12 brush into our water. And we're just going to start using this lovely purple paint that I have already there. I've sprayed down my paint so it's activated, but I just want to make it a little bit more watery. And as you can see, it's a little muted. I had some grayish on the palette too. That works as well. So we're going to start by making our large petal. This is our larger flower. I'm not really naming all of these or some of these, maybe a few. <laughs> Um, dabbing my brush in water to lighten up the color as well. Um, so, you know, we're going to do the idea of flowers and some of them might be more rec recognizable than others and that's kind of what we're doing today. So a little bit more purple and we're going to just take that saturated paint and just dip into the wet paint in the middle of those flowers, allowing that paint to spread and just get everywhere. And we will do line details when this is dry. So no worries on how it's looking now. We're just going to let it hang out and we'll definitely come back to it. But you can take a brush with uh, water on it and you can kind of blend things around if you want. Okay, so now we're going to start on our little daisy type looking uh, flower. It has long, thin petals, many petals. And the method that I'll be using is always painting these petals from the outside in so they all look the same. And we're going to make sure we remember that there's a middle there and all these petals are going to point towards that middle. And you can make some of them a little curved, a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, however you desire. But as you see, I'm going to be angling my brush in the way, even though it looks awkward, but it's going to give us, see right here, that ability to have every single petal having the same point. If I were to make some of them going from the middle outward, then that tip is gonna look a lot different. And so we wanna make them pretty uniform. So we will, of course, do another layer on this. Looks like a little sunshine, so cute. And as you can see there too, I have a little white space in the middle that we can use for our middle later on. All right, so we're moving along quite quickly here. And we're gonna do something that might be kind of like a Snapdragon or a Delphinium, just going to angle it to the right. And as we go up higher, we get towards the tip of this spray of flowers, we're gonna get thinner. And the blooms are gonna get smaller until they become little buds. So we're just gonna make our paint a little bit less saturated, adding green to your red, adding some more red to your green um, that you added to the red. It's until you get that color that you want. Sometimes you add too much, but if you use, um, green with red it's going to desaturate it and make it a little less intense so we're just going to make four or five petals on these little blooms some of them might have only three or four um, some of them might just be buds just keep in mind that we are going to make this look a lot more realistic once we add our stem so don't be too worried about it here i'm just making it really thin as i said up at the top doesn't look like much yet but i promise it's going to come together quite nicely and then over here we have a few buds towards the bottom there and we can always fill it out with more buds and more leaves all the things so i have my liner brush now you can use a any other thin brush that you would like but the liner is going to get me the best thin stem that i'm looking for so we're just going to draw in or paint in really thin stem not too worried about it and then we're just going to connect every little bloom with our liner brush and look at how cute this is looking it starts to come together so nicely and 
all the way to the top there okay and I'm gonna use my brush just to put in a few more little leaves around just to fill out our our bloom and then if you feel like you need more little flowers in there by all means be my guest and do that because this would be the greatest uh, the best time to do it so when you're starting to put down those flowers you just don't know you know how how many you're gonna want on there so my big suggestion is to just try out different things and see what works so i'm gonna darken up these little guys with some saturated red paint doing our wet on wet technique it's beautiful it's gonna spread nicely and create some nice contrast with the light in the background the light pinky color that we had uh, at the beginning okay so now we're gonna do some foliage stems are in order leaves are in order so i'm adding some lemon yellow to my sap green making a really nice grassy green okay so we'll just do a little stem kind of curved out just a little bit and um, it's going to bleed a little bit and that's okay because it's touching wet paint remember it's okay when watercolor behaves in a way that you weren't sure about just go with it because what else can you do so we're doing our c-curve shapes for our leaves leaving a little white space a little c-curve shape over here behind my hand <laughs> And you'll see me do it on the other side for the yellow flower as well. So let's see, let's add a little bit of some brown in here just to create a more muted green color, sometimes a little more green than, you just kind of play around with the color and see what comes out of it. Okay, again, little stem, practice a C-curve shape here, but it's a little wonky. Just wiggle your brush around, fill it in. You can add some more darker paint too into the wet on wet. And let's do another one pointing downwards over here. So your leaves don't have to be traditionally round C-curve shapes. They can be really thin. They could be thicker. Uh, we'll add in some foliage, just some little skinny ones on the bottom of that. And then maybe some around the middle, the top, just wherever you think it looks good. This is your painting, as I always say. So just, um, yeah, just make it how you want it to be. Okay, over here now, add in some darker paint. I love doing that, adding some darker in on the bottom just to emulate that shadow side of the flower. It looks really pretty. All right, so now we're going to do a little tiny blue flower. So I'm just mixing up the paint that's on my palette. There's a little bit of pink that got in there and I've got some blue, so it's a bit purpley, but that's fine, we'll go with that. I love to use leftover paint, reactivate it, add water because well, that's just the beauty of watercolor. So here on these little flowers, we're gonna do four petals. Some of them might have three. Uh, make them varying sizes and varying heights as well. And we will connect all these sweet little ones with some lovely thin stems when we're done. But just keep adding it in. Um, I'm kind of making this little spray. And you could even pretend that they're anchored into the ground. They could be growing in a grassy field, what have you. I'm thinking forget-me-nots. I'm not really sure if that is exactly what I'm going for here. But anyway, that's what's coming to mind as I'm looking at these guys. Got a liner brush here. Um, as I'm chatting, I need to let you guys know what we're doing. So we're just connecting all these lovely little stems um, to our flowers. And just be aware that you could do a straight stem, but it looks a lot cuter if you make some of them straight and some of them curved out. A little bit of an arch in the stem i just think it brings it together quite nicely and of course you can add some leaves you can add more flowers as well little blooms and there we go by magic there's a few more so just like i did with the other previous flower set we're going to add a few more little buds just to make this a little bit more filled in and adding in those stems as well so just keep adding as you like. Um, they're very easy, very simple. And now let's prepare for our next flower. So I've got this lovely watery pink and we're just gonna do a five petaled flower similar to the one at the top, but it's gonna be more of a side facing. So you'll see that one of the petals is a little bit shorter because that's the perspective we're seeing it from. I'm letting these petals be just a little bit jagged on the ends. I like that look versus making them really roundy. 
And I just think that um, it looks a lot more fun. Okay, we're just going to do four petals. <laughs> Maybe a little bit here. Um, so since it's facing on the side, we can only see that just a, a really small, thin petal here on that bottom part. Adding in, we added in some nice, bright, saturated paint just for a little bit of shadow and some, I don't know, movement, contrast in the center as well. And we'll do our middle once that's dry enough to be able to tolerate more um, paint without it spreading too crazy. All right, so I'm getting my brown mixed up for my top flower. I've got my number six brush, and I'm just going to do some little stippling action here. That's tiny little dots, just creating a lovely center, and I'm allowing those centers to connect to each petal. So just kind of fanning out that center, um, if that makes sense, versus just a round center. I think it, it looks a lot um, more interesting and prettier if we do that. Okay, so now we're gonna do some purple on our palette. I would like to have a nice saturated color for the center of our flower. And we're just going to scribble, scribble, scribble really easy, really fast, just to make it look more interesting. It could be shadow, it could just be the coloration of the flower. But man, that's reminding me of a pansy right there. That was not what I was trying to paint, but it most definitely looks like a pansy. All right, some more yellow. That's a really nice orangey yellow that's showing up really well. Remember with yellow, again, the values, the lightness and darkness of it, um, you know, it doesn't really contrast as much as other colors. And so you got to go kind of orangey yellow versus bluish yellow, which is honestly, lemon yellow has a little bit of blue in it. Kind of weird. You should look it up though. It's pretty crazy. All right, little stem going on. Let's do some more leaves. C curve shape, C curve shape fill in the center, maybe leave a little white space. I love to do that. Adding in some darker shadow on the leaf itself, allowing that to dry. Now you can do line details when it's dry with a liner brush if you wanted, or you can leave it like this. We're gonna lift some paint too. I think I'd like to keep that top part as if it's highlighted with the light. Okay, so this guy's almost done for now, and I'm really excited because next we're doing a rose. A rose can be pretty complicated, but if you practice enough, it'll come a lot easier to you, and eventually it'll feel simple. So we're gonna take some bright red. Let's do this actually. And that one is more of a kind of burgundy color, and it's got a little bit more blue in it than that bright red, which has more of a yellow in it. All right, so it's a pretty thick amount of paint we're gonna start with. We're gonna do some little tiny C-curve shapes in the middle, little circles, and then, and leaving white space, and we're gonna get a little bit thicker doing these C-curve shapes, and a little bit thicker there as we get farther out from the center. Wash your brush, dab it on a towel, and then start spreading out that paint. And you'll notice that now you have a little bit of bleeding as the petals are starting to come to life with that really nice contrast between the dark in the center and then the lighter as we go out. You can even use some of that watery uh, paint or even just water to start bringing out that color and we're going to do several layers of this This is not the one and only step that we'll be doing So remember as you're doing this um, and as you're adding in a little bit darker for some shadow Remember just to leave that white space that is really key to Helping this flower look like a rose and fluffy and it has some light all the things so just adding a little bit more in there, but we'll come back to that once it's dry. So let's do a leaf on the top here. Again, our C-curve shapes, fill it in the center, another one here, and maybe one more towards the, towards the side. Okay, now we are gonna do our daffodil, which is unmistakable, so I do know that this one is a daffodil. We're gonna start with an orangey mix, and I'm gonna do this reddish-orange color as well into the orange. Just a really vibrant color. And we'll do this little trumpet shape. It's a triangle shape. It gets skinnier at the bottom and thicker as it goes to the top. Just a tiny little one. And then we're gonna get some cadmium yellow. And we're gonna make these beautiful triangular shaped pointed petals. Just really dainty, really easy. This is such a simple flower and it doesn't take a lot of practice to get it. You've got four petals there and boom, you're done. 
And so then we'll do a little bit of a, let's fill in some gaps, and then we'll do a bit of a stem as well. And a little bit of lines, make it really cute. Okay, and now we're gonna need a thinner brush for our stem. I'm running out of paper here, so we're just gonna do the best that we can fill that in. And then let's do a little bit of a, let's do a little bit of a leaf as well. Just kind of shooting off the side. There we go. Easy peasy. And that's really just one C curve shape. Since the leaves are so thin, that's all you need to do. All right. Okay, so now it's time to go back in with some details. All right, now that everything is dry, because I did stop the video, we're gonna add some centers to these little violets. Maybe that's what they are. They look so cute with that little yellow happy face. Okay, next we're gonna add our center for this little guy. A little bit of brown, just kind of stipple that in, super easy. If you guys are enjoying this video right now, if you could just do me a favor and subscribe to this channel, like the video, and even leave a comment. Let me know which flower is your favorite. I'd appreciate it so much. It really helps out my channel. Right now we're gonna do the center for this bottom pinkish one. And I wanted to do green because I'd like to change it up a little. And so we'll stipple again here. Kind of keep it flat there because that the the bottom part or the inner part of the center is being blocked by that little tiny stubby petal. So now we're just making some little lines here, kind of like you would with a poppy. Is it a poppy? I don't know. But we're just making some little spiky lines. And um, yeah, that's what we're going for today. A little bit of pinkish purple color as well, just to create some line details on this flower. Again, I'm not naming it. It's not going to be anything specific. Um, I just want you guys to have fun painting. If you can have fun painting flowers, uh, then you can find so much joy because they're just so beautiful. And if you can think of each of these flowers could be made a little bit bigger and placed on a card that you can give to someone, a thank you card, a get well card, a happy birthday card, um, whatever you wanted. I just think that making your own cards is a beautiful thing to do. It's precious and people really enjoy it. Okay, adding in some green there. I'm going to blend it now with a clean brush. And that's looking good. Just a little bit more um, contrast for our leaves. Alrighty. And let's see what else we want to do. A little bit, a little bit more of a foliage look would be good. So as you're doing any of these, if you want to augment anything, feel free. This is your painting. Well, this is my painting. But if you're doing it, it's your painting. Okay, rose time. So mixing in some lovely bright pink. And guys, just see what I'm doing here. It, it's not rocket science. I'm not saying I'm an expert at all, but this is what I do. So, and it seems to work some of the time. <laughs> I'm just adding in these little C curve shapes of really bright color. And I'm gonna go back in with my clean brush dabbed on a paper towel. And then you're just gonna blend in that beautiful color Look at how pretty this is. You have the light pink underneath. You've got that dark pink for the shadowy parts in the petals. And then the white, the white of the paper showing through is just gorgeous. I don't know if you're seeing the same thing I'm seeing, but creating roses like this, uh, leaving that white space is just going to be pivotal. So anyway, otherwise you're just going to get a big pink circle, honestly. And that's not what we're going for. Guys, I've got my liner again. I'm going to do some line details, some veins in my leaves. So pretty. And just gives a little bit more of a texture to the flower, um, well, to the leaves, but the whole look. And it just brings out a nice, um, a nice pop. A little bit of realism, just a tad. All right. So now I do want to try to darken up this yellow. Again, like the other one, it's a little bit hard to do. But just a little bit more of a saturated yellow and you're good to go. Of course, as you can see, the little trumpet here went a little nuts when I dried this with my blow dryer. And that can happen sometimes if you're not patient like me and the paint can get away from you. But anyway, it is what it is. 
Guys, if you're enjoying this painting uh, and you'd like to see more videos and classes and exclusive things, I do offer many things like live streams and more tutorials, art prints, and all the things on my Patreon channel. Link is in the description of this video. So thank you so much for being here and painting with me today. I hope you had as much fun as I did, and I will be so excited to see you guys on the next video. Take care. Thank you.